You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. The Ministry of Education will receive the first induction days in all public schools tomorrow to inform parents of the most important milestones of the new school year 2022-2023 after a two-year closure due to the corona pandemic. The ministry said the induction days for parents at various schools falls in line with the directives of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to inform the parents with portfolios, including the necessary information about the new school year in addition to a voucher to purchase school stationery and supplies. On the 1st of September, schools of Bahrain welcomed the administrative, educational and technical staff in preparation for the implementation of the induction days for parents starting from the 4th until the 6th of September to inform the parents of the file for the student which contains the new school year 2022-23 calendar. Students in all public schools will return to classes on the 7th of September. In order to provide a safe and healthy educational environment, the Ministry of Education is keen to maintain schools and prepare them to receive educational cadres and students in an environment that stimulates knowledge, especially with the return of compulsory attendance education for all. A total of 147,000 students in public schools and more than 84,000 in private ones will return to school, noting that there are 250 early education institutions, 210 public schools and 79 private ones in Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain, represented by the Ministry of Education as Vice President of the Council of the International Bureau of Education of the UNESCO, and as a representative of the Arab countries, participated in the meetings of the Executive Committee of IBE UNESCO, which were held at the office's headquarters in Geneva. The recommendations of the meeting, in which Education Minister Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi participated, focused on a number of topics that will be presented at the Education Transformation Summit that is set to be held at the United Nations in New York this September. The recommendations included providing support for the Member States in using qualitative curricula for the early childhood stage, promoting the use of technology in the teaching and evaluation processes to develop the digital capabilities of teachers and learners, and promoting environmental content and educational curricula. It is worth noting that it was agreed to cooperate and exchange experiences between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the International Bureau of Education in a number of areas, including the development of curricula related to the environment and climate change, and cooperation and training officials in the early childhood sector, which includes kindergartens and nurses after the responsibility of monitoring nurseries was transferred to the Ministry of Education. Minister of Labor Jamil Hamidan affirmed that the ministry in cooperation with the Labor Fund Temkin is continuing its efforts to support the stability of the training process in private training institutions and to improve the quality of the outputs of training institutes and centers. Hamidan stressed the importance of encouraging investment in training in the promising economic sectors in order to enhance the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a regional center for training and human resource development. He explained that investing in training the Bahraini human resource is a great gain for the labor market, stressing the importance of identifying challenges and opportunities for the improvement and review of the most prominent future plans of training institutions and link them to the actual needs of the labor market. Meanwhile, a report analyzing the data of the annual and financial reports of the private training institutions issued by the Ministry of Labor for the year 2021 said that more than 29,000 trainees were trained through 83 institutions supervised by the Ministry of Labor. The report stated that the most attractive sectors and programs for trainees are the theoretical and practical occupational health and safety fields, followed by administrative programs while the engineering field with its various specializations such as aeronautical engineering, electrical and mechanical engineering occupies the third place. List of sectors that attract trainees. Bahrain today marks the Arab Day of Nursing and Midwifery alongside the General Secretariat of the League of Arab States. This year, the day is celebrated with the slogan of aiming to keep pace with the nursing goals of care, giving, efficiency, quality and knowledge. The need to promote awareness and recognition of nursing in the Arab world was the impetus for the decision of the Arab Board of Ministers for the Health in 2021 to celebrate Arab Nurses and Midwifery Day on the 3rd of November each year. The Kingdom of Bahrain has condemned the assassination attempt against the Vice President of the Republic of Argentina, Dr. Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, denouncing in the strongest terms this heinous terrorist act. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs also affirmed Bahrain's solidarity with Argentina and its friendly people, extending its full support for all that would preserve Argentina's security and stability. It further reiterated the Kingdom's position rejecting all acts of violence, extremism and terrorism regardless of their motives and justifications. 
Bahrain's ambassador to Belgium, Abdullah bin Faisal bin Jabir al-Dostari, conveyed greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa to the President of the European Council, Charles Michel. This came when the ambassador presented his credentials to the European Council President as the Kingdom of Bahrain's ambassador to the European Union. The ambassador noted Bahrain's pride in the Bahraini-EU growing bilateral relations. The European Council President commended the level of Bahraini-European relations and emphasized the need to continue working towards further cooperation in various fields, wishing the ambassador success in his diplomatic duties. A number of regional and international issues of common interest were also discussed during the meeting. Regional updates now. And a Yemeni politician was gunned down in the Houthi-held city of Sana'a on Thursday shortly after an armed group executed a senior judge, raising speculation about infighting among the Houthis. Residents in Sana'a said the unidentified men shot dead Brigadier General Abdullah Mohammed El Kipsi, a former MP and a supporter of the Iranian-backed terrorist Houthis, outside his house, the latest in a string of drive-by killings targeting Houthi-allied military and political figures. Houthis blamed the killing on a family feud, claiming that their security services are on the hunt for the killer. Similarly, an armed group early on Thursday executed Mohammed Hamran, a Supreme Court justice, two days after kidnapping him from a Sana'a street. The U.S. Navy confirmed that an Iranian warship seized and detained two U.S. unmanned surface vessels in the Red Sea earlier this week. The U.S. Navy said Jamran FFLG-76, an Iranian Navy ship, seized two sail drone explorer unmanned surface vessels operating near one another in international waters before returning to the vessels to the U.S. Navy the next day. The vessels were released after the U.S. 5th Fleet communicated with the Iranian warship to de-escalate the situation. This came two days after Iran tried and failed to seize a similar vessel in the Gulf. Tugboats refloated an oil tanker that was briefly stranded in Egypt's Suez Canal late on Wednesday due to a technical fault with its rudder. The vessel Affinity 5 had been blocking the southern section of the canal, two navigational sources said, but SCA sources said shortly after midnight local time that traffic had returned to normal. The incident occurred in the same southern single-lane stretch of the canal where a giant cargo ship, the Ever Given, ran aground for six days in March of 2021, disrupting global trade. After the Ever Given ran aground, the SCA had announced accelerated plans to expand the canal, including extending a second channel that allows shipping to pass in both directions. Work on the expansion is due to be completed in 2023.